today we're going to be talking with Emily Mathan about empathy parenting. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and let Emily start for us and tell us a little bit about what empathy parenting entails. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me on here. So yeah, again, Emily Mathan. And uh, so empathy parenting, what I do is I coach parents. So I work with parents uh, individually, sometimes as a couple. Uh, I work, I run some groups and I also offer classes. So it's a variety of different ways that parents can get support. Uh, and that's a big part of what I talk about is just you're not alone on this journey of parenting that sometimes, you know, whether you're uh, encountering a new developmental phase or you're dealing with some new circumstance in life. I mean, we're all dealing with this <laughs> global circumstance at the moment that's, you know, creating some new challenges. And so sometimes it's helpful to have somebody to talk that through with uh, that's maybe not your partner. And so that's what I do is I provide that resource, that one-on-one -on -one couples and group uh, support. Great. So your uh, um, services are here in Central Virginia. That's right. Yeah. So, and in the, in the world now that we've all experienced so much well, on Zoom, uh, most pretty, pretty much I'm only working with people uh, through this kind of format where we're seeing each other through a yep. telehealth kind of link. Excellent. All yeah. right. So um, since we focus here on, on things that preschool parents should know, um, and I don't know if you have anything that comes to mind right away, but I, I know one of the things I often think about is um, when I talk to parents about finding a preschool, there's often concerns about how something's going to be handled, whether someone does something to their child, or maybe even more often they're concerned that if their child does something that is unkind, unwanted, or unsafe, you know, how is that going to be handled? So I do always tell them that's a really good question to ask the school and talk to the teacher who would be your child's teacher. Um, but recommendations from you maybe on if the child has done something unsafe uh, or if a child has hit another child. I mean, do you have some guidance for handling those kind of situations? Well, there's kind of two parts to that. So one is uh, what are you doing on the home front to kind of enable you know, these kind of conversations and communication to come up so that you can hear from your child what's going on so that you're a safe, warm environment at home where they can tell you what's going on and you can hear you know, kind of what's, what's happening and you can provide some guidance on the home front. And then the other part is, like you said, getting answers and finding information from the school's perspective and, uh, and how can you advocate for your child. It might be that there might be some advocacy that's necessary and it might be some you know, reinforcement that is required on the home front. So it kind of depends on the situation, but those are really two ways is what can you do at home in terms of reinforcing um, and being that welcoming, safe environment for them to share about what's going on at school and then the advocacy. So if it was a specific, if someone is so if somebody um, wanted to play with something or, or, you know, often I feel like in preschool, it's a communication issue, right? <laughs> Especially the little guys, they don't necessarily have the words that they need. And so they may react in a physical way. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that, and obviously every situation is different. So I would probably, I would, I would speak with both of those children and and ask them, you know, what was happening and see if we could figure out uh, a way for everybody to know what's going on and what to do if you don't get your way kind of thing. I don't know, if, I was wondering if you had any sort of specific hmm, words or, or phrases that you find that are particularly helpful with young children, um, if, if they are that frustrated that they might strike out or how you would help them to find another way to channel that. Yeah, I mean, I think it's helpful to have some consistency. So if you, if the, if the language that they're using at school is something you can find out if there's words, mm -hmm. you know, if they're, if they're teaching the children to walk away, that might be the language that you're repeating at home or use your words. It's helpful if they have that reinforcement on the home front. So if you're finding out what they're saying at school, that you can echo that at home. And then uh, just for that reinforcement, and then just in general, you know, working with your child to, it's a life skill to be able to calm yourself and use your words. I mean, yeah. adults still struggle with that sometimes. So yeah. how do we teach our children from a young age to 
find the things that help them calm down and that it's a process and that we can have patience as parents to help them with that. They really need us to help regulate their emotions when they're so young. They don't, they don't know how to do it yet. So they need our support as parents. And so some of it is being there with them. And sometimes it's giving them some tools. It could be, you know, handing them a teddy or a lovey that they love and, and showing them that they can hug that with, you know, if they're feeling upset and, and finding some other like blowing bubbles or taking some deep breaths, giving them some specific ways to help them calm their bodies. Uh, those are things that parents nice. can do on the home front that uh, will likely be reinforced at home, at school. They might have like a calm down spot at school. You can create your own calm down spot at home or have even like a little kit or tool bag that the kids can, can start to go to, to help them with their, you know, with, with managing their emotions. Yeah, I know. And I know sometimes we do the, we will do the breathing or just, you know, centered. I love the, the blowing bubbles is great because it focuses them, right? <laughs> Completely on something else. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to think in general. Um, so calming skills, I think that's a really important one. Um, we do practice words depending on the situation, obviously, and uh, kind of finding our way. And part of it's just learning that at you're not the only one here, so you have to share or you know, that just takes practice, I think, some of that. Um, you know, I didn't know if I wanted to touch on this a little bit, and I know this is something else that can be very different depending on the family and the child situation. But, you know, by the time they get to preschool, um, most of the kids are through the tantrum stage, but not everybody. Um, and and uh, I don't know if you have any any words of wisdom on and we, maybe we can discuss too what what we've what I've done in the past. Um, uh, but what you think about sort of that when a child just has that meltdown full on <laughs> tantrum stage. <laughs> have you dealt with uh, some of that? <laughs> I would imagine. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. And, and it's kind of two parts. One is how can we as the adults <laughs> stay calm? And part yeah. of that has to do with making sure that our tanks are filled as much as we can. Um, and so whether that means that we get up before our children get up so that we can have some solo time or doing something that feels good to us, whether it's exercise or journaling or just having that minute with your cup of tea or coffee. So doing that proactively, taking care of ourselves. And then the other thing is also, what are the, some ways that if we do get upset, how do we kind of get back to our calm, neutral state? Because uh, we're modeling for them all the time uh, in terms of how to manage our emotions. And so if we are yelling, then th then that's what we're showing them. That's what you do when you're mad. So if we can, can kind of work on that within ourselves, both again, that proactively or in that moment when you're feeling upset, how do I, whether it's taking a deep breath or saying mommy needs a time out, daddy needs a time out, or I need to walk away that we're demonstrating that, uh, that those are really gonna help support us so that we can navigate it with a clear head and with a open heart so that we can understand, wow, they are going through a hard time and then we can support them. I know sometimes parents, you know, there's like when you're out in public or you're with family members and there's that additional concern about, oh, I'm going to be judged by other people or my family members. It's hard to, to set that aside and just focus yeah. on, I'm okay. My child's going through a hard time and I'm going to be here with them and I'm going to support them through it uh, because it, it is a phase and some kids have bigger tantrums than others. And, and then you can start to detect the patterns. Oh, well, yeah, they didn't take a nap today. Maybe that has something to do with it and, and kind of putting it in perspective a little bit. Yeah, I do always say, you know, what are those things that trigger your child? It's funny you mentioned about the other people. I, um, in my, many years ago, in my, in my own parenting with my eldest uh, and she is cool with me sharing. Um, she had two tantrums. She was three. I thought we were like, oh, we, we made it through that. Uh, and I had just read something on that. And I was like, okay, you know what to do. And we were in a store. So you've got the bad lighting, the sounds, the whole whatever. And the cart was sort of filled and she wanted to, and you know, she started having a, a, a complete meltdown. And I was like, oh, you know what to do. And so I 
just picked her up and we and and I and I, having grown up in a store leaving stuff it wasn't food but leaving stuff in a cart and knowing someone else was going to have to put that away really it was a little counter thing in my head but I was like this is what I have to do and took her and we went out to the car she was in shock and was like and that ended it because oh I back then we just left but then going back and figuring out okay it was the situation we were probably tired that day when it had shed something to eat all of those things playing on into that yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> and, and like most people my children had very different uh, reactions so those were textbook did what you're supposed to do and, and it was happened twice never again yeah yeah, yeah my so, other, go oh, ahead. Well, I was just gonna say yeah like really knowing your child I mean parents really are the expert in their children and sometimes it takes just a minute to step back and look at the big picture uh and you know what okay what's going on here what are some of those patterns like you noticed um whether it's oh wow they're really dependent on they need food every couple hours (laughs) otherwise they are going to fall apart um or you know whatever those things are the loud noises like you mentioned that that they're that knowing that ahead of time can be helpful in terms of how you design your day and and how you how you navigate those. Um, I also well, I have a I always feel and my parents will tell you I always tell parents, but I my feeling is even with a tantrum, even though you're exhausted, those things that well obviously that's your teaching and learning opportunity. So to me, a bad day is a good day because at school if it, we we want everyone to have a good day, but you know it's that's not when we learn how to play with others or how to, you know, so if something goes wrong, that's our time to be calm and go, that's okay. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, figure it out, you know, what are we, what are we going to do there? Um, and for some children at school, it's a little different. Some have, you know, different home situations. I know that um, certainly at school is a place where we can hopefully show them, show everybody that there's calm ways one would hope <laughs> to, to handle a lot of situations. Um, If there was something for preschool parents who are uh, newly sending their children off to school and, you know, I I think one of the things, I don't know if you've dealt with um, helping parents through separation anxiety. Um, I find and and, or found over the years that that is often so much harder for the parent (laughs) than, than the child. I mean, if the last thing you see is your if you're new to school and your little loved one is really upset, that's what you carry with you. The rest, you know, you go away. Um, not realizing that, although we try to show people and explain, but but it kind of as soon as you go, most cases, then the child finds something to do. And and and, uh, but I don't know. Have you have you have worked on any cases with sort of a heavy duty separation anxiety or parents having issues with that? Well, I think transitions in general are yes. hard for children. And when there's a big life transition, like going from being at home with mom or being at home with dad or being at home with another family member and to going to a different setting where there are new caregivers and there's a lot of other children around, you know, some kids respond really well to that and other kids don't. But in general, transitions can be can be challenging for some kids. And, and again, knowing your child and knowing that that might be an issue, uh, at least can start off as a parent, okay, I know that this is gonna be challenging, but we can make it through. Just kind of like talking to ourselves, talking ourselves up about it a little bit. And then having a plan for what you're gonna do uh, through that transition so that you know, you know kind of what, and you can even share it with your child, this is what's gonna happen. This, and this and this, this is kind of what our process is going to be. And um, so that you can, you know, give them some structure and some guidance and they can feel secure in that. Uh, And then, and, you know, kind of like with any limit that we set, sometimes there's pushback and, Mm -hmm. and sometimes, you know, it can be hard for parents to deal with that, with that, whatever that is, the pushback to that limit. Um, And so, like you said, having, finding out if you know that your child might be having a hard time or will have a hard time knowing what are they going to do at school? What are, what are some strategies they use to engage and getting even that reassurance from the school? Like you said, they're fine. After you go, they're just fine. And, and having that reassurance and hearing that, like you said, can really help the parent, um, 
with, through that through that transition. Yeah, and I think you're, you're mentioning having that plan and then that that follow through, which hopefully the you know if it would it have said to do with preschool, the teacher hopefully can help you. But I think that follow through is really important. Um, noticed on both ends where I've known parents who when the child is in and kind of playing wants to sneak away and I'm like no no because <laughs> it's easier than seeing don't because then they're always looking to want you know am I <laughs> so so being honest and if some schools it's not a problem at all and in, and unfortunately now with what's going on of course uh, in even more schools it's not a problem at all because they're not even, parents aren't even allowed in the building they have to leave their child and go um, but I think there's something to be said for allowing parents and children to be in, if you're in a situation where you can work through that, because that's a big stage to, to kind of get through, um, and, and just making sure you do what you tell your child you're going to do and they know it, you know, it's okay. That's the school. They know it's okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's a tricky one for new preschool parents, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and having even like, I don't know if the parents here have remembered Dora the Explorer or that, uh, that old, you know, that, that old cartoon where, you know, she usually had three things on an adventure. First we do this, then we do this, then we do this and keeping it really simple and short yes. and easy for the child, almost like a little rhythm yes. that they remember. Like first you put up your backpack, then we get your snack and then we give hugs goodbye or whatever those three things are that they know. And then, and then, and then it, we can move on with our day. Um, That's great. I like that a lot. All right. Um, well, I, you know, again, we, these are, these are our short little interviews and we just, uh, is there anything else you have thoughts about with, with uh, preschool parents that you might want to mention? Are we good? Are we... I mean, the main thing that, that I would say is just in general, that's true for all parents is that, you know, your home is your child's first community. And so that's, you know, what they're learning in that home environment, it, if they're learning it in school too, but you're, you're really, your home is your, your child's first environment um, and first community. And so how you're going to navigate my needs as an adult and your needs as a child, that's like life. And so um, that sometimes that can be a little out of whack. And so that your needs as a parent are valid and your growth and development as a, the child's growth and development are also valid. And so how do you find that balance? That's like, that's the, the magic of life, right? <laughs> it is, it is. Routines to help a lot with little people, right? <laughs> and yeah. for adults, knowing what to expect. Yeah. I, I always often think life is about expectations. And so if you set up reasonable ones, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. thank you so much. This was really good. And, and uh, I will make sure there are some links up when this is up so that everybody can find out how to get in touch with you. Perfect. Um, and I know sometimes you do things I, I saw recently you were out at, were you out at Wild Rock or doing something with them or? I haven't done anything out at Wild Rock recently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love Wild Rock. Wild Rock yeah, is awesome. Me too. me too. So we'll have to keep that in mind. All right. Well, thank you very much.